So my name is Romain Troublé, Trouble in French, in English, in good, in good French. <laughs> Romain Trouble, and I'm a sailor. I used to be a biologist as well. I sailed America's Cup twice against uh, Sir Peter Blake, by the way. I lost twice. And uh, now I'm, I'm heading this program, Tara, from the Tara Ocean Foundation, since uh, 16 years, with the president and CEO, uh, which is uh, Etienne Bourgois. And uh, I have two kids, and uh, I'm a happy man. Uh, it's, the Tara Ocean Foundation has been launched uh, 16 years ago uh, uh, to support ocean science, ocean research, and uh, to also advo make advocacy and also share all this research we do in the ocean to the public, to the UN, to the public everywhere we go, and to the kids as well. Yeah, we, we, the foundation is studying uh, the, the ecosystems of the ocean, I mean the plankton ecosystem, the microscopic organisms, microbes of the ocean. They are key, key partners for the climate mitigation today. We're studying corals, uh, and also we're studying uh, plastic, plastic issues. You can see everywhere in the ocean today, it's quite a nightmare. And uh, I have all, of, all, all these issues, all these topics that we study, I think the most important one is, the, the most shocking one is the, the way we put plastic all over the place in the last uh, couple of years, I mean, couple of decades, in fact. We can see plastic in the Arctic, in Antarctic, all the oceans are, have a lot of, uh, some plastic bits, some very small stuff like that. Plastics are... I mean, everyone saw the pictures on the sky, I guess, about turtles or sea turtles or mammals eating plastic and dying on the, on the shores. Uh, but what also is very, very dangerous, I mean, very concerning, is that all the plastic we see we start around the world since 10 years, we study these issues. We see plastic this size of, size of a, rice, a grain of rice all over the place. And this plastic is not cleanable at all. You cannot clean that. If you clean this, you're going to clean the ecosystem with it. And this plastic gets smaller and smaller. And as, as much as the, way, the more it is small, uh, the more it gets into the food chain, into the interaction with the ecosystems. And this is an issue. In the end, it will be an issue about health, our health as human beings, I think. Uh, we, are in the, we are far at sea, in, in the Arctic, in, in Antarctic since, uh, since 10 years. And uh, what we see in the ocean is that we really feel that we are hopeless. I mean, what to do with all these plastic bits of plastic everywhere. And so this, uh, this year we decided to invest uh, time and money and also a lot of research into what flows. You have a stock of plastic in the ocean and you have a flow of plastic to, that goes to the ocean. And how can we stop this flow in the future? And this is, I think this is the, the most important thing to do in the, in the short term, how to stop this flow that, to, that puts plastic in the 8 million tons of plastic estimated every year around the world. It's a lot. And when you are in your kitchen, or what you do first when you have a leak, water leak, first you look for the leak, you stop the leak, and then you, you soak the leak, take the sponge and take the water out. I think we should do the same, stop the leak. Yeah, and so we both at sea, we're collecting a lot of data down to the bottom of the ocean, but also we, we collect the surface water, surface uh, plastics are mostly on the surface. So we collect this on board. Some of the analysis, I mean, observations are done on board, but the rest of the, of the analysis are done in the labs. And so far, for the last 16 years, it's about 100,000 samples collected of many, many different ecosystems. So it's a, a huge work and a huge work in the lab afterwards, of course. Yeah, the, 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 what shows the data on plastic, for instance, uh, I mean, the, one of the, when the priority for us all is to try to find out how to reduce our impact on, on plastic pollution in the ocean, and how to reduce the flow of this plastic from our land, our cities, our backyards to the ocean. This is, takes a lot of people involved and also try to educate. I mean, this is key. The boat is doing research at sea, but also we stop as many times as we can. On this year, we're going to stop 18 port calls uh, to share the story and to explain what we do and what we see in the ocean and up to the rivers, because these issues are coming from our backyards. Yeah. 
Of course, uh, all the research is public because it's public research, it's uh, academic research, there's no problem, we have access to this data. There's a lot of data, I think, in, uh, in the water management uh, regulations or systems to the managing, but I think there is a lot, but also there is not much, in fact, uh, because so far, not much, not much countries looked at the watershed in details to find out where are the leaks. We don't even know where are the leaks, and what we try to do with this year, with this project this year, is try to find evidence or arguments that will drive us to the leaks, which areas of industry are, are connected to these issues, which neighborhoods, which cities are the most impacted, all these things. When you wake up in the morning, you're the father of your kids, you, you can tell what you want your kid, to your kids, you can educate your kids, then you go to work, you are an employer, an employee, you're industry, you're a supplier of an industry, you're making, so you have an impact. And then you can vote at one, st one stage in, your, in, in the year. So all in all, we are all part of the, of the, of the system. We are, each of us, the, the solution in many compartments of our lives. So I think the solution is not there is bad industry players and good people, good consumers. And, no, we are all consumers. We are all, in a way, affecting, affected by these uh, issues. And also we all have a role into these issues. So I think this has to be collective. I really believe this has to be collective. I think uh, as long as we are all part of the solution, we need to teach people. We need to make them aware about what's going on and, the, the, and the, what we, how we affect all these ecosystems, all these issues today in our daily lives. And I think uh, regulators also can have a, have a great uh, input to, to, to make events or campaigns that is explaining that people can use less plastic, they can use the water of the system, uh, they can refill things. This is the basic stuff that could I, at least address some question about this, uh, the, the solution. Yeah, plastic pollution, if you, took, if you talk about plastic, plastic pollution is really... The leaks, we believe the leaks are coming from many, many different usage. It's not... Uh, a, there's a thousands and hundreds of uh, plastic producers, hundreds of pla thousands of plastic transformers. Uh, the users, we are billions of users of plastic, of course. So it's not much the plastic in itself, it's really the, the, use, the plastic we use very, for a very short time, that takes a long time to degrade. The packaging mainly is one of the targets we need to address. And today, uh, industry has to make the move to give some option to the consumers. And those consumers have to make the move to a request. So who is starting the first one? That is what we see today. And I think this is where we need the regulators and the states to come into to the play, to say, to, to put incentive to the consumers and to the industry to start the transition. Yeah, we, we work with a company in France that is, uh, soon is, will launch a, a, a two-year study on a watershed. First, small watershed, but they manage everything, the wastewater, uh, flooding waters, they manage also the, the fresh water systems. And they will find, they will make an, a survey in these watersheds, in every single recipient, every single stage of the watershed, to find out what, what is the pollution over the year. To find out where are the leaks coming from. I mean, is it coming from the streets? Is it coming from the industry, from the people, from the west, from the black water? These are things we need to understand. When you go to the doctor, you try to know what, what you have. And uh, the di diagnosis is very important to tomorrow to put the public money in the right place at the right time. What we see in the ocean very frequently is that we can see plastic in a few millimeters. But if you look further, you can find plastic micrometers, nanometers plastic, very small textile stuff. These are, going, these are passing by the wastewater management systems. This goes across the, the, the grid and it's is, is lost in the ocean for, for ages. So one, one part of this innovation in the water industry. How can we address all these pollutants, smaller sizes of uh, pollutants? This is one, one, one. And also what we don't see is the, all the chemicals. This is another topic. But I, th I, believe, I believe that uh, the plastic is really the, the tip of the iceberg. You can see it. But below, I mean, we have all these chemical pollutants that are coming from um, 
uh, drugs, from uh, PCBs, from POPs, from many, many different things. This will have to be addressed in the future. This, uh, this really affects our, our daily drink, daily life. This is health in the end. We have all these plastic bands all over the place. Uh, to try to, in Europe as well, uh, to try to ban some usage and stop some usage of this useless usage, in fact. But uh, industry-wise, I don't, I, I don't have no, no. It's very hard to, 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 to find companies that is really taking the, the, the issues. Some people, like Veolia in France, are trying to do this survey uh, on the watershed. Big investment, in fact, to find out what's, what's going on. But uh, otherwise, I don't, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's a big issue. But even Japan is moving on this topic. Uh, in June. The G20, we speak about plastic garbage in the ocean in Japan, so this is new. Japan is the kingdom of uh, packaging, so... There is the investment into awareness, outreach, explaining the issues, try to take the consumers, the users, uh, aware of what's going on, what they do every day, what it takes to clean that or to stop this. Uh, incentive is important to, for industry to, to propose new products to the consumers and also consumers to ask for new products. And, uh, and regulation, I mean, in a way, uh, rules and laws are st setting the standards for new, new, new design of, uh, of, the, of the industry, new design of the, the process globally. So everything has to come into place. And, and, not at the same time, but in a, in a nice way. And I think all this regulation, timing, and level of incentive has to be managed by a st the state in the end, because they have a hands on everything, on the taxes, most of it. Many people believe that we know everything already. People believe that we know where is the issue with plastic. People believe that we know where the plastics come from, the leaks are coming from, for instance. We have no idea, no idea today. And uh, people think also many times that we, we don't need science anymore, we, we know. Or, or, or some, some people say that climate change is not real. All these kind of signals, are, to me, are very scary for the future, for democracy as well. So to my point of view, research has to be at the center of uh, societies today. I mean, try to get facts on issues, try to understand what's going on try to predict what's going to happen in the future. This is key, I think, to for the future of our societies and democracies. And with this goes climate change fights, and with this goes plastic fights.